The traditional greeting on Yom Kippur is not Happy New Year or Lishana Tova. We do that for Rosh Hashanah, but rather it's Gemar Chatima Tova. May we all be sealed for a year of goodness, a year of blessing, a year ahead. So on this morning, we say Gemar Chatima Tova. If you want to say it to your friends throughout the course of the day, you can also shorten it to simply say Gemar Tov. And it really uh, gets that, the, the, sense of the, um, the sense of the importance of this day. Yom Kippur, after all, is a day uh, in which we look inward, we look deeply. It's a day of renewal. Um, it's a day in which we get to the best, we attempt and strive to be the best, to get to the best of ourselves, to be the very best that we can be. There are some traditions on Yom Kippur that some of us um, are observing, myself included. And just to dispel one thing, you may have noticed that I'm sporting these very nice, very comfortable, very bright white, they look like tennis sneakers, right? Well, in all reality, they are um, non-leather, because sometimes uh, traditionally one doesn't wear leather on, um, on, on Yom Kippur. And white is also a, a color that's typically worn as well as a symbol of purity and a symbol of renewal as well. So I decided this year it was going to be too much to sport the white suit. So I'm going for the white shoes this year, but just in case folks are just wondering, uh, yes, they are very comfortable, um, but they're also, I think, uh, <laughs> very much in line with the, um, with, uh, with the tradition of today. So throughout the course of the day, whether you are with us in, uh, here at Share Me all day, or they're just here for um, services this morning, this afternoon, whether you are joining us online, we hope that you will take time today to think, reflect, 
to be moved by the liturgy, by our music, and to just be inspired by the power of community, because how good it is to be together once again. Our service continues on page 135, page 135. <clears throat> We stand this day, all of us, in the presence of our God, youth and elders, women and men, those close to tradition and those who have been estranged. All are welcome in this community of prayer. Around the world, all Israel greets this holy day. We stand with them, a people united by our history and fate, linked in mind and heart to generations past who stood before God to be cleansed of their sins. In Russia, Poland, Germany, and Spain, in Morocco, Egypt, Brazil, and India. Our great-grandparents are here with us today, our great-great-grandchildren as well. All are present in memory and hope. We stand this sacred morning, all of us, as one. Continue on page 167. My pleasure to invite Debbie Shore. I will hold you highest in my heart, will pronounce with blessing your unsayable name everywhere and always. Each of my days will be a blessing for you. I will stop and consider your burning beauty, your wondrous deeds. I will stop and speak of your awesome acts. I will stop and remember your greatness. Psalm 150. Hallelujah. For those in the sanctuary, you can follow along on page 170. We're going to let the folks at home see our choir.
continue on page 178 with Baruch Hu, page 178. Please rise on your feet or in your heart. Continue on page 181. I invite Anita Rubin to lead us in the reading. Like an unbroken current, energy streams from the source, bathing the planet in life, calling forth life. Movement, mind unfolding from matter, the power to love. And we offer it back to you, our own creative energy, ever dreaming, building, shaping patterns out of chaos, searching out light in the darkness. Creation never ceases, not for an instant. All life is aglow with your light. All things draw substance from the source. Baruch atah Adonai, Yotzeir ham orot. Our praise to you, Adonai, creator of the lights of heaven. And on page 183, Jean Rubin. You love us by helping us grow. You give us Torah, a ladder for the soul. Words that draw us upward, every mitzvah, an invitation to climb. Forge and kiln and crucible to purify our hearts. You give us Torah. You love us by helping us grow. On page 186, the watchwords of our faith, Shema Israel. You may be seated. Continue on page 188 with Via Hafta. I'd like to invite Ezra and Avi Briskin. Via Hafta et Adonai Elohecha, Bechol Avavcha, Ubechol Nafshecha. Ubehomeodecha, <laughs> Uvlechtecha vaderech, Ushochbecha uvkumecha, Ushartam leoz agetecha, Vehayulito tafot bein enecha, Uchtavtam al mezuzo betecha, Uvisharecha, Leman tiskeru vasitem et homitzvotai. Be tem kedoshim leloechem. Ani Adonai eloechem. Asher hotseti echem. Meret mitraim. Liot lachem lelohim. Ani Adonai eloechem. On page 195, 
like to invite Lindy Schechtman. And they shall know that I, Adonai, am their God, who brought them out of the land of Egypt, that I might abide among them. I, Adonai, their God. You took us out of the darkness so that your light might dwell among us. You showed us your power to bring down the powerful, uplift the enslaved, transform the social order. You showed us your strength so that we might remember our own. We carry the Exodus vision wherever we go, lest we forget our sense of liberation, lest we lose the joy of breathing free, lest we grow indifferent and blind to others' pain. So long as we work to make you present, we walk the path of freedom. But if we forget to bring you into this world, then we return to the darkness. Our service continues on page 198, Hatefila, standing before God. In the depths of night by the edge of the river, Jacob was left alone. In heartfelt longing in the temple of God, Chana uttered her prayer alone. In the barren wilderness, in doubt and despair, Elijah found God alone. On the holiest day, in the holy of holies, the high priest entered alone. We are bound to one another in a myriad of ways, but each soul needs time to itself. In solitude, we meet the solitary one. Silence makes space for the still, small voice. For the psalmist says, deep calls unto deep. From the depths of our soul, we seek what is most profound. Let us rise together for the Amidah. Adonai sefatai tiptachu fi agitehi latecha Adonai open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu, Elohe Avoteinu Vimoteinu, Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sarah, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Leah. Ha'el ha'gadol ha'gibor v'hanara El elyon Gomel chasadim tovim V'kone ha'kol 
וזוכר חסדי אבות ואימהות ומביא גאולה על לבני בני אם למען שמו באהבה זוכרינו לחיים זוכרינו לחיים מלך חפץ בחיים וכותבינו בספר בספר החיים למען כל אלוהים חיים מלך עוזר ומושיע ומגן ברוך אתה אדוני מגן אברהם בעזרת שרה אתה גיבור לעולם אדוני נחייך כל הצהריו להושיע מוריד הצה נחכה חיים בחסד נחייה הכל ברחמים רבים סומך נופלים ברופאי חולים ומתיר אסורים ומקיים אמונתו לשני עפר מי כמוך בר גבורות ונדום מהלך מלך ממית ומחיה ומצמיח ישוע מי כמוך אל הרחמים זוכה יצוריו לחיים ברחמים בנאמן אתה להחיות הכל ברוך אתה אדוני מחיי הכל Please be seated. Continue on page 208, page 208, with Unatana Tokef. Our sovereign God of pardon and forgiveness, let these words of sanctity ascend to you. Let us proclaim the power of this day, a day whose holiness awakens deepest awe and inspires highest praise for your dominion. For your throne is a throne of love, your reign is a reign of truth. In truth you are judge and plaintiff, counselor and witness. You inscribe and seal, you record and recount. You remember all that we have forgotten. And when you open the book of memories, it speaks for itself. For every human hand leaves its mark, an imprint like no other. And so a great shofar will cry, Dekia! A still small voice will be heard. Angels in a whirl of fear and trembling will say, Behold the day of judgment, for they too are judged. In your eyes, even they are not blameless. All who come into the world pass before you like sheep before their shepherd, as a shepherd considers the flock when it passes beneath the staff. You count and consider every life. You set bounds. You decide destiny. You inscribe judgments.
Our service continues on page 213. The power of this day, an empty page, an open book, a day of ultimate questions. Please join with me. Will I still be here next year at this time with the ones I love beside me? What is in store for my family and what will become of my friends? Who will have reason to celebrate? Who will contend with grief? New love, new babies, marriages deepening or breaking apart, prosperity, struggle, reversals of fortune, illness and health await us. Who will be missing when we gather next? Who will stand apart? Who will be estranged? And who will have joined us enriching our community? On the edge of the unknown we tremble. What lies ahead for us all? An empty page, an open book. Nothing is written and nothing is sealed. Flesh and blood, frail creatures. Our lives are fleeting and subject to chance. Yet this we possess. The strength to persist, to prevail, to comfort one another in the dark. Prayer, right action, a turning toward the good. These give us hope and help us bear the pain of life. But, th but through return to the right path, through prayer and righteous giving, we can transcend the harshness of the decree. <laughs> You are everything that we praise you for, slow to anger, quick to forgive. You do not wish the death of sinners, but urge them to return from their ways and live. Until the day of death, you wait for them. You accept them at once if they return, since you created us. You know our impulses. We are but flesh and blood. We who are mortal, our origin is dust, and so is our end. We wear out our lives to get our bread. Like broken vessels, like withered grass, like a flower that must fade, a shadow moving on, a cloud passing by. Mere dust on the wind, a dream that flies away. But for you, ever-living sovereign, time has no limits. Your presence, unbounded by days and years, is everywhere. A glorious mystery, none can decipher. Your name is worthy of you, and you are worthy of your name, and our name you have linked with yours. Please rise as you are able for the Kedusha on page 218. Oh, 
Please be seated, and please take a few moments to pray silently through page 248, through page 248.
a former congregant of mine named Howard, attends services most Friday nights. He always sits in the same place, deliberately choosing to create some space between himself and others. He rarely steps into the social hall for the Onik Shabbat. He likes to come alone, pray with others, and then return home. One day I was talking to another congregant who also attends most Friday nights. We were discussing a work-related issue of his, and I thought that Howard could provide some good advice. I suggested that this congregant talk to him. Who's Howard, he asked. You know him, I replied. He comes to services every week, sits in the same spot towards the front on the side. You know him, right? That's his name, he said. I see him every week. I've actually never met him, and I certainly don't know his name. A few years ago, a rabbi learned that an active member of his congregation had resigned. It was unexpected. After all, she had been a longtime member and attended almost every service, program, and activity. The rabbi was surprised to see that she had resigned and reached out to her. When he asked why she had left, she told him, I came to everything, and I never met anybody. Each of us has a different need when we come to Shul. Some like to be alone with their own thoughts. Others like to be in the company of others. There's a problem, however, if we come to be with others and end up feeling alone and unseen. If that happens, the synagogue and its people have failed. It's been a while since we've had to think about what it means to gather. We've gotten used to and pretty good at creating online communities via, via Zoom and live stream. And now, as you can see, we're beginning to return to the synagogue. The digital tools we have learned to utilize will continue to be a feature of congregational life. And while some are perfectly content participating in congregational life from the comfort of their home, others yearn to be with each other. We have been apart from one another for a very long time. Because of our protracted period of distancing, many people feel lonely. For those who put the synagogue at the center of their lives, not having the opportunity to sing, pray, learn, volunteer, serve, and even eat in person has resulted in a new form of loneliness. Physicians and mental health professionals describe loneliness as, quote, a subjective feeling where the connections we need are greater than the connections we have. Loneliness has been a feature of the human condition since the dawn of creation. When God saw the first human being, Adam, suffering because he was alone, God remarked, it is not good for a person to be alone. So God created Chava, Eve a fitting helpmate for Adam. Our Yom Kippur liturgy and some of the scriptures we share today speak to several conditions, several important conditions of Jewish life, feeling close to the community, feeling distant from the community, and enjoying moments of solitude that Jewish practice provides. Yom Kippur can be existentially lonely and solitary even when we are surrounded by others. We sit in the congregation or at home as we do the important and inner solitary work of introspection, reflection, and reevaluation. We look at the ways we missed the mark in the past year. We look ahead, pledging to avoid the mistakes that cause pain or distress in our lives or in the lives of others. The liturgy of the day is shared both in the first person singular and the first person plural and is recited in many voices coming together. However, our traditional scriptures also shine a light on loneliness and solitude. The Torah portion we read this morning, we will read this morning, explores a powerful dimension of standing together as one in community, bound by a common purpose. Atem nitzavim hayom, you stand here today, all of you, the command is spoken to the people directly. 
the entire Israelite community, from tribal chiefs to the common laborer, stand together to seal the covenant that God is making with them. They agree to follow God's commandments in exchange for God's protection as they prepare to enter the promised land. I wonder, did everyone who heard these words feel included? Did they feel like they were seen by all around them, valued for who they were? After all, it's possible to be gathered with others, sharing an experience, and yet still feel alone. One Shabbat while traveling, I stood alone in the center of a synagogue's social hall during the Onig Shabbat. The rabbi had publicly acknowledged me from the bima, and I expected to be welcomed, but not one person came over to greet me or say hello. The good feelings from that uplifting service vanished. I was among others who had just shared a positive Shabbat service together, yet during the Oneg, I felt very much alone. Sadly, this happens far too often in many synagogues. Some people, like my friend Howard, want to sit, pray, then leave alone. But others yearn to make a connection with others. A service can be uplifting, a a sermon inspiring, the mood joyful. But if the person leaves without having made a connection with someone else, all of that positivity is for naught. The Torah portion this morning reminds us that while we are gathered as one wrapped up in the joy and euphoria of the moment, it is important to pay attention to the periphery to make sure that everyone feels seen, valued, and cared about. Synagogues will either thrive or die based on how thoughtfully we pay attention to our people. I hope she or me will earn a reputation for being the most welcoming synagogue in the area. It's not out of reach if we demonstrate care for everyone we welcome into our spiritual home. Feeling seen and valued is important. However, synagogues also provide us with space to experience the solitude we need to help us find greater clarity and vision. Now, while solitude is not a primary Jewish practice, Judaism provides examples where solitude helped to improve one's life. Rabbi Nachman of Bratslav, yes, here he is again. Rabbi Neb, Rabbi Rabbi Nachman of Bratslav used to wake up early in the morning, go out into a field, and pour out his heart to God. He would talk out loud to God and no one else and let the words flow freely from his mouth. He spoke words of gratitude, praise, petition, prayer that came from the heart. This solitary practice prepared Nachman to join his community for the morning minion once he returned from his alone time in the field. The Haftarah for Yom Kippur afternoon is the story of Jonah. He teaches us about overcoming challenges by by gaining clarity about his purpose through an unexpected solitary period of time. When first called by God to speak to the people of Nineveh and tell them to change their sinful ways, Jonah did not have the mindset to accept God's call. So he fled. Thinking that he could get away from God, he isolated himself in the bowels of a ship. And when a huge storm began to toss the ship about, the sailors realized that God was causing the waters to swell because God was angry with Jonah. In order to save their own lives, they had to find Jonah and hurl him into the sea. After they did, the storm abated. The waters calmed, and the ship and its crew survived. And Jonah? A large fish swallowed him. For three days he sat in the belly of the fish. It was that contemplative, solitary silence that allowed the prophetic purpose of his mission to germinate. When the fish belched him up onto dry land, Jonah was now ready to fulfill his prophecy. That alone time enabled his mind to settle and prepare him for the task he knew he needed to do. The story of Jonah teaches us that removing distractions and focusing on the present is an essential part of Jewish living. 
We may feel angry or frightened that God has abandoned us or is asking too much of us. If we sit with our feelings in solitude rather than run from them, we may be able to better understand what we are called to do. Many years ago, I participated in a series of Jewish mindfulness retreats. Much of our time was spent in contemplative silence. We meditated in silence, we hiked in silence, we ate in silence. Yes, dozens of rabbis living in silence. <laughs> it is a congregant's fantasy, yes, I know. I began each retreat with many things on my mind that were causing me to be stressed, tense, and anxious. However, after four days of meditation, reflection, and study, I emerged with more self-understanding and a greater sense of my purpose. My mind was calm, my stress had diminished, and I was now ready to do what I was called to do. Solitude helped get me there. Over the years, and especially over the past 18 months, I've spoken with a number of homebound individuals. One would expect these people to be among the lonely, loneliest in our midst. However, many of them have found meaningful ways to connect with others despite not being able to leave the home. Whether consciously or not, they have adopted the holiness code from the book of, Le of Leviticus, which is read on Yom Kippur afternoon. These verses lay out a plan for ethical Jewish living. Feed the hungry, take care of the poor and vulnerable, lift up the fallen, care for the stranger, do not stand idly by, love your neighbor. These sacred acts can provide one with a sense of mission and purpose. Doing for others contributes to the greater health and well-being of our larger community. By performing these acts, we can see that our work and our deeds matter. Our efforts to repair the world one mitzvah at a time can mitigate debilitating effects of loneliness and help us feel connected to others, even when we live alone. We all experience periods of loneliness, just as our prophets and sages did. We can find comfort knowing that we are not alone. When we stand with community and feel a part of rather than apart from it, our loneliness can be abated. When we spend time in solitude, we can gain clarity. And when we devote ourselves to improving our society, we can find greater purpose and meaning in our lives. May, may these texts, such an integral part of our Yom Kippur liturgy and day, may these texts inspire us today and all days as we go forth, may our loneliness and isolation abate, may our connections grow, and may we feel closer to God and to one another in all of our work today, tomorrow, and beyond. Can you hear what's sown? May it be God's will. We continue with Avinu Malkenu on page 252, page 252. I invite you to rise on your feet or in your heart, whichever is most comfortable. I'd like to invite Ellie and Jason to come to the ark to open the ark for us, please.
can join together. Avinu Malkenu Shma Kolenu, Avinu Malkenu, Almighty and Merciful, hear our voice. Avinu Malkenu Chatanu Lefanecha, Avinu Malkenu, we have strayed and sinned before you. Avinu Malkenu Chamol Alenu Ve'al Olalenu Ve'tapenu, Avinu Malkenu, have compassion on us and on our families. Avinu Malkenu Kale Dever Vecherev Vera'av Me Alenu, Avinu Malkenu, halt the onslaught of sickness, violence, and hunger. Avinu Malkenu Kale Koltsar Umastin Me Alenu, Avinu Malkenu, halt the reign of those who cause pain and terror. Avinu Malkenu Kodvenu Besefer Chaim Tovim, Avinu Malkenu. Enter our names in the book of lives well lived. Avinu Malkenu, Chadesh Alenu Shana Tova. Avinu Malkenu, renew for us a year of goodness. Avinu Malkenu, Male Yadenu Mebirchotecha. Avinu Malkenu, let our hands overflow with your blessings. Avinu Malkenu, Harem Karen Mishichecha. Avinu Malkenu, let our eyes behold the dawn of redemption. Avinu Malkenu, na'al tishivenu reikam milfanecha. Avinu Malkenu, we pray, do not turn us away from you with nothing. Avinu Malkenu, kabel berachamim uvratzon et tefilatenu. Avinu Malkenu, welcome our prayer with love, accept and embrace it. Avinu Malkenu, Ase Imanu, Lema'an Shemecha. Avinu Malkenu, act towards us as befits your name. Avinu Malkenu, Ase Lema'ancha Im Lo Lema'alenu, Lema'anenu. Avinu Malkenu, act for your own sake, if not for ours. Avinu Malkenu, Ein Lanu Melech, Ele Ata. Avinu Malkenu, you alone are our sovereign. Avinu Malkenu, Patach Sha'are Shamayim, Latiflatenu. Avinu Malkenu, let the gates of heaven be open to our prayer. Avinu Malkenu, Shema Kolenu, Chus Firachem Alenu. Avinu Malkenu, hear our voice, treat us with tender compassion. Avinu Malkenu, Chonenu Va'anenu, Ki ein banu maasim, ase imanu, tadaka vachesed vehoshienu, avinu malkenu, almighty and merciful, answer us with grace, for our deeds are wanting, save us through acts of justice and love.
page 255, as we continue with Seder Kiryat HaTorah, our service for the reading of Torah. Adonai, Adonai, El Rachum Vichanun, Erech Apayim Verav Chesed Veemet, Notzer Chesed La Alephim, Nose Avon Vafesha Vichata'a Vinake. Adonai, Adonai, God compassionate, gracious, endlessly patient, loving and true, showing mercy to the thousandth generation, forgiving evil, defiance and wrongdoing, granting pardon. Please be seated. (laughs) 
I invite all those who are part of our groups, whether you are with Shafty, as I see up here, or you are our part of our ELC religious school uh, or um, committees or teacher team, or you are part of our uh, food bank, you can make your ways up to the front couple of rows so that when it's time for your aliyah, you'll be able to come up to the bima quickly. So our Torah reading today comes from the book of Deuteronomy, chapters 29 and 30. In the normal cycle, it's the Parshat Nitzavim, which we actually just read in our, um, in our on Shabbat a couple of weeks ago. Um, just very powerful words, some of which I spoke about earlier today. And we are really blessed to have um, some wonderful Torah chanters to lift up these verses for us today and to invite some special groups to bless us as well. So for the first Aliyah, uh, which will begin uh, chapter 9. Uh, Asher Levitt will be our Torah chanter. Where's Asher? Where's Asher? Ya Amdu, la la Torah. And for the first Aliyah, I invite the members of the Shafti board to come up and stand on the front steps. Abby Green will come up to the Bima and lead us in the blessing, the Aliyah. You guys can stand on the blue, oh, oh blue dots, whatever. <laughs> Close enough. It's good enough. <laughs> We're doing our best for all this, you know, distancing stuff, we'll see. Baruch at Adonai Hambarach. Baruch Adonai Hambarach Le'olam Va'ed. Baruch Adonai Hambarach Le'olam Va'ed. Baruch at Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Asher Bachar Banu Mikol HaAmim. Finatan lanu et tarato, Baruch atarunai, no tain hatara. Atem nitzavim hayom kuchem, Lifne Adonai Elohechem, Rashechem, Shivtechem. Zignechem vishot rechem, kohol ish Yisrael, tabchem nishechem vigeirecha, asher bikerev machanecha, mechote vetecha, ahad shoev memecha, leovrecha. Be read Adonai Elohecha Uv Alato Asher Adonai Elohecha Korim Cha Hayom Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Natan Lanu Torah Emet Bechaye olam nata betochenu, Baruch ata adonai, no tain hatara. Amen. And many thanks to our teen leaders under the leadership of Fern Levy. You're a tremendous example for our congregation, and thank you for also greeting and welcoming everyone as they came in today. Our next reader will be Chloe Fingerman. And she'll be beginning on verse 12. Ya amdu la aliyah la Torah. And for the second aliyah, we invite all those who are part of our ELC, ta our uh, Early Learning Center Task Force, our Religious School Committee, and all of our teachers in our congregation. There might be some people who have multiple areas, so uh, please come up to the Bima, and Judith Silverman will be chanting the blessing before and after on behalf of of this group. Baruch Hu Adonai Hamvorach Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Le'olam Va'ed Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Le'olam Va'ed Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher barchar banu mikol hamim banatan lanu et Torah to baruch atarunai no tain haTorah. Amen. Lama an 
מחקים אותך היום לא לעם והוא יהיה לך לאלוהים כאשר דיבר לך וכאשר נשבע לאבותיך לאברהם ליצחק וליעקב ולא אתכם לבדכם אנוכי כורת את הברית הזאת ואת העלה הזאת כי אשר ישנו פה עמנו עומד היום לפני אדוני אלוהינו ואת אשר איננו פה עמנו היום. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר נתן לנו תורת אמת והיה עולם נטע בתוכנו ברוך אתה אדוני נותן התורה. אמן. יש לך And thank you to our teachers for your dedication to our students and for your leadership each and every week. It's been amazing under Rabbi Goldberg's leadership how even last year we were really able to maintain our school and person in big rooms outside and uh, would not have been done with our dedicated teachers and our leaders as well to help guide us through that process. Our reading continues on page 268 at verse... 11, at verse, actually take the, oh wait, sorry, sorry, 267, sorry, 267, we're just skip, skipping over to verse 11, and Alan Scheinberg will be our third reader, and Ya'amdu la'ali ala Torah, I'd like to invite all those who participate in our food bank, whether it is helping to sort food or to distribute the food, to make your way up front, I know that there are some here, and Maryland is not the only one, <laughs> and for the Aliyah, a special invitation to Marilyn Halpern, who led our food bank for, Marilyn, I'm not sure how many years, but as long as I've been here, and for, <laughs> who knows, <laughs> you know, well before my time, and Marilyn, thank you for your leadership over these last uh, many, many years, and thanks for your devotion to this work, and you can see this group of folks, even throughout the pandemic, even as early as, uh, I, think, I think we missed one month last year, they still managed to come in safely and distantly, were able to help to uh, sort food and distribute food to um, those in our community who are in need. It's a real um, shining example of our congregation, and we're grateful for your leadership. And Marilyn, thank you for the many years of dedicated service to the food bank and beyond. Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamborach. Baruch Adonai Hamborach Leolam Ba'ed. Baruch Adonai HaBarach Le'olam Ba'ed Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Alam Asher Bachabanu Mikol Hamim Ve'natad Lanu Et Torato Baruch Atah Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen Amen Ki HaMitzvah HaZot Asher Anoki mitzavcha ayom No niflet hihi mimcha Velo rechokha hihi Lo vashamayim hihi Lemor Mihi Yale lanu hashamayma Veyikahecha lanu Veyashmienu ota Venasena Velo meever layam hihi Lemor mi yavar lanu el ever hayam v'yikache halanu v'yashmienu ota v'nasena ki karov elecha adavar meod v'filcha uvilvavcha laasoto. 
Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech alam Asher batad lanu Torah demet Vechaye olam nata betochenu Baruch atah Adonai Noten ha-Torah Amen Thank you, Hawk. So one more thing, which I didn't share before, I just wanted to make sure it was okay. So some people may know that um, Marilyn and Sheldon's family, um, most of them live in Israel. I'm at 15 grandchildren. How many grandchildren, Marilyn? Eight, okay, Grandchild, grandchildren and uh, great-grandchildren and, and grandchildren and great-grandchildren in Israel. So um, Marilyn and Sheldon will be making Aliyah, God willing, at the end of this year moving to Israel to be with family. And Marilyn, we will, and Sheldon, we will certainly uh, miss your presence and your leadership here in the congregation. But as we said, Hevra Torah becomes a nice Havdalah activity in Israel. Thank God for this technology that will still be able to keep you connected to our community. So we are grateful for all the many ways that you and Sheldon have served and led our community. And we wish you the Hatzlacha in your future endeavors. We'll take a moment while the Torah is still out and in the presence of community to offer a prayer of healing for those who are in need of healing of body or mind or spirit. As the choir comes up and assembles to begin to sing this version called Heal Us Now, this uh, beautiful version um, that uh, you can find, that you can actually find on page 272. Those who are in the sanctuary, you can find it in your prayer books. Those who are at home, we're gonna let you look at and hear the beautiful voices of our choir. Before we sing together, if you just, from your seats, we're just all together in unison, if you just would like to share a name of someone for whom you are praying this Yom Kippur as we go into a year wishing for, God willing, a year of health and blessing ahead, please share names aloud. May God bless them and heal them. Mishabe Rahim, 
to invite Fern and Scott Levy to come to the Bima to help dress the Torah after I lift it. I invite you to please rise for Hagba and Galila.
continue on page 286. Page 286. It's my pleasure to invite Randy and Brett Cohen to lead us in a prayer for our country. God of holiness, we hear your message. Justice, justice, you shall pursue. God of freedom, we hear your charge. Proclaim liberty throughout the land. Inspire us through your teachings and commandments to love and uphold our precious democracy. Let every citizen take responsibility for the rights and freedoms we cherish. Let each of us be an advocate for justice, an activist for liberty, a defender of dignity, and let us champion the values that make our nation a haven for the persecuted, a beacon of hope among the nations. May our actions reflect compassion for all within our borders and abroad. May our leaders and officials embody the vision of our founders to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. We pray for courage and conscience as we aim to support our country's highest values and aspirations. The hard-won rights that define us as a people, the responsibilities that they entail. We pray for all who serve our country with selfless devotion, in peace and in war, from fields of battle to clinics and classrooms, from government to grassroots, all those whose noble deeds and sacrifice benefit our nation and our world. We are grateful the, for the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness that our founders ascribe to you, our creator. We pray for their wisdom and moral strength that we may be guardians of these rights for ourselves and for the sake of all people now and forever. Our service continues on page 296 with Vidui Zuta, the short confession. Eloheinu velohe avoteinu ve'imoteinu, our God and God of all generations, may our prayers reach your presence. And when we turn to you, do not be indifferent. Adonai, we are arrogant and stubborn, claiming to be blameless and free of sin. In truth, we have stumbled and strayed. We have done wrong. Of these wrongs, we are guilty. We betray, we steal, we scorn, we act perversely. We are cruel, we scheme, we are violent, and we slander. We devise evil, we lie, we ridicule, we disobey. We abuse and defy, we corrupt and commit crimes. We are hostile, we are stubborn, we are immoral. We kill, we spoil, we go astray, and we lead others astray. We continue now, hands to our hearts, with the words of Ashamnu. <laughs> Yada da 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 Ya da 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 Ya da 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 Ha'avi nu Ha'avi nu Ve'hir Ya 
Let us join together in the words on page 298. Our turning away from your mitzvot and laws of goodness is a hollow pursuit. You are just concerning all that happens in our lives. Your way is the way of truth, while ours leads to error. What can we say to you whose existence is beyond time and space? What words of ours can reach your realm, beyond the clouds, beyond heaven itself? Every hidden mystery, every revelation, surely you know them all. You know the secrets of the universe and the secrets of the human heart. You know and understand us, for you examine our inner lives. Nothing is concealed from you. Nothing is hidden from your sight. Eternal One, our God and God of our ancestors, we pray that this be your will. Forgive all our wrongs. Pardon us for every act of injustice. Help us atone for our moral failures. We turn to page 305. We focused inward, narrowing our vision, we were preoccupied with ourselves. We turned our backs on the poor and defenseless. We were contemptuous of the weak. We tolerated violence against children, neglect of the old, exploitation of the innocent. We told ourselves there was nothing we could do. We wasted the resources of the earth. We denied our own responsibility and put it out of our minds. We kept silent when we should have spoken out. We gave in to cynicism and despair. We sought entertainment instead of enlightenment. We were lazy, indifferent, and callous. We forgave ourselves too easily for our failures. We forgot that we always have a choice. Page 312. Rebbe Nachman of Bratslav taught, always look for the good in yourself. And remember, joy is not incidental to your spiritual quest. It is vital. For so it is written in Isaiah, you will go out through joy and be led forth in peace. Focus on the good in yourself. Take joy in what is good, and you will be led forth from inner dark. my pleasure now to invite Ellie Short, who will share her presidential words on this Yom Kippur for these High Holy Days. Ellie. Gamar Hatima Tova to all of you here and also online. I am so happy to be able to speak to you in person today from the Bema. And next year, I hope all of us feel comfortable being here together. 
It's my honor to serve you as president. During these high holidays, which is a time of reflection and opportunity for change, I've been thinking about how I can be a better wife, a better mom, a better Grammy, and sister. How can I be a more supportive friend? But what would probably interest most of you more than that are my thoughts on what I want to accomplish during president, my presidency. While there are many concerns for a president, I could dwell on COVID issues, for instance, but I'm not because I'm fed up with COVID. <laughs> I decide to look beyond COVID. I would much rather discuss what we can all do to foster and deepen our relationships within our share and meet community. Because relationships are what make a community strong and special and help the community grow and remain vibrant. The importance of developing ties really hit home to me this summer when my sister, Jan, moved out here from Ohio. She didn't know anybody in the area except our family. She decided to join Shear Me, and she wasn't just looking for the religious aspects, she was also looking for the social ties as well. Looking at Shear Me from her perspective as a new member and seeing the challenges she faces to find her place here, I realized that just like Jan, Many of us at Cheer Me are all looking for ways to form deeper connections with each other. This is true whether you're a new preschool parent looking to make, meet other parents, or you're a religious school student looking to make friends. We're all looking for a home here at Cheer Me, regardless of our age, our marital status, our sexual identity. Maybe you're a non-Jewish spouse, or maybe you chose to be Jewish. Maybe you need additional assistance to participate in our events. Or maybe you just moved to the area, or maybe you're rejoining. Share Me can be your spiritual home, the community where you have meaningful Jewish experiences. So what are some steps we can take to foster connections? Well, I encourage you to take the, make the first move when you meet somebody here that you don't recognize. Sadly, I needed to explain our tough Philly facade to my outgoing sister from the very much friendlier Midwest. <laughs> I had to explain that people here usually don't talk to each other when they're on an elevator. We don't greet everybody as we pass each other on the streets. But I'd like Sheremy to be known for its worth warmth and its embrace of all who come to our building or attend one of our events. So starting today, I hope we make it a priority to walk up to an individual or a family you see standing alone. Introduce yourselves. Show them you're interested in getting to know them. Ask them about themselves. Or say hi to a stranger on Zoom. We've all experienced our fair share of Zoom during this pandemic. You know, one good thing about Zoom is it's much easier to know people's names. It's right in their little box, usually. <laughs> Have you ever been embarrassed to ask somebody's name because you've already asked them at least twice and you really shouldn't know it by now? <laughs> to avoid that problem, make it easier to greet people in, when we're in person, Share Me will be introducing a new name tag system. Our engagement committee is working on this as well. They are gonna be assigning buddies to new members to help them in the onboarding process. To create a more welcoming environment for all and maximize the participation of everyone, including those with special needs, we recently created an inclusion committee and we'll be forming a diversity, equity, and inclusion task force to incorporate those principles and practices into our Share Me community. Recently, I started randomly calling five congregants per week just to say hello, listen to their stories, find out about their interests. During these conversations, I've tried to help some of them find their place within our congregation. I hope to help more of you, and if I haven't yet called you and you'd like a chance to chat with me, please feel free to reach out to me and I'll give you a call. I'm looking forward to hearing your story. Later this fall, COVID permitting, we will launch a new initiative called Neighbor to Neighbor, where small groups of people, either from the same neighborhood or who have similar interests, will meet throughout the year, allowing for new friendships to develop. So maybe religious school or ELC families could share Shabbat or a holiday meal together 
with families in their own children's age groups. Maybe a Jewish cooking club could develop or Shabbat afternoon card groups could form. Another good way to meet people, make connections, and share experiences while deepening our Jewish identity and bringing Jewish values to our lives is participating in our lifelong learning program. Whether you're interested in music by Jewish artists, learning about modern day Israel, participating in our racial justice book group, listening to engaging speakers, or a Jewish book discussion group, there's a program for you. The lifelong learning brochure is available on our website at cheerme.org, or you can get a, a hard copy from our main office. Perhaps you're interested in social justice. You know, the repairing the world is a core Jewish value. I encourage you to join our Tikkun Olam group as we align ourselves with the Relig Religious Action Center projects. RAC, as it's known, is the Reform Movement's advocacy branch. Or consider donating food, financial support, or your time to our own Cheer Me food bank. Please support our high holiday dry food drives by dropping off your groceries throughout the entire month to help feed the hungry in our community. And we welcome as many of you as possible to volunteer to help sort food on Sunday, September 26, and October 3rd from 12 to 3, or on Monday, October 4th, 1030, we distribute food to various local agencies. And thank you to those of you who have already brought groceries. Of course, our community is also a place where we can nurture our spiritual needs, share religious holidays and life cycle experiences, and give and receive support from our Jewish community. Whether it's through Hevra Torah services on Saturday morning, the beautiful voices of our cantor and choir raised in song, or one of the rabbi's meditation sessions, our community is a place where you can find peace and solace when you need it. There used to be an old Sprint commercial. It was like, can you hear me now? Well, certainly this pandemic has gotten our attention. You know, it is so important to be there for each other in good times, but especially in bad times when it really matters. To this end, I'd like to revitalize our Chesed Committee, find people who are willing to give someone a ride to a doctor's appointment or Shabbat services, to send cards like Margie Copens does, make calls to people like Debbie Shore does to our, some of our senior congregants, or pay visits to fellow congregants and let those who are going through a tough time know we're thinking about them. One of my daughters had a serious illness which hospitalized for, her for five days, two weeks, after her second child was born. Luckily, her former congregation used a program called Meal Train, and meals just started showing up at her house. My husband Ed and I were greatly appreciative since we were ones helping to look after the newborn and her two-year-old. Our women's group, Women Assure Me, offers meals for those who've had surgery. Our preschool activates the Meal Train program for ELC families in need. But I think we should extend this type of support throughout our congregation. So if anyone is interested in working on this, please get in touch with me. In order to maintain Sure Me, to support you in good times and bad, we rely on your generosity. Today, I ask you support Sure Me because you believe in a caring community and the importance of leading a meaningful Jewish life. If you can do so, Share Me needs your financial support to help educate our children so they feel proud to be Jewish. To continue our wonderful lifelong learning and youth programs in order to create and deepen our Jewish identity and commitment. To enhance the celebration of holidays and life cycle events, engage in Tikkun Olam, and yes, to help pay the mortgage, upgrade our HVAC system, and repave a parking lot, just to name a few things. Thank you to those of you who have already made a special contribution to our Circle of Giving Fund. Among other things, Circle of Giving helps us to extend congregational membership to all who wish to belong to Share Me, regardless of financial circumstance. You could also continue, consider including Share Me in your estate planning. We want Share Me to be strong and vibrant for us and for future generations. Thank you for being a member of this Kehillah Kadosha, this holy community. I hope you will join me 
on a journey of making Shear Me a warm, welcoming home to all who want to belong to us. And please, if you see my sister Jan, say hi to her. <laughs> May you all be sealed for a good year in the Book of Life. Thank you, Ellie, for your inspiring words and really for a call to action, um, really, um, as we strive to be this, this community, this really this, this shining example here in Bucks County and beyond. And so, uh, but it's not just, you know, Ellie talking here, it's all of us working together to get, to get to that point. And so, thank you, Ellie, for your leadership of the congregation, for the board of directors who uh, held Torah scrolls last night, for all of your work to help make Shira Me the place to be. So, thank you. Um, on the Bema this morning has also been uh, Jason Cohen. I'd like to invite Jason to share a few brief announcements before we conclude this morning's service. <clears throat> Gamark Hatima Tobat, to those in person, those watching online. Thank you to Rabbi Briskin, Camp Dr. Kolbrenner, Rabbi Goldberg, and Rena Perlstein for leading such a wonderful service, and our amazing choir, and Eric Schnitzer, our accompanist. And thank you to all of our Torah readers as well. Uh, Rabbi Briskin had a great message during his sermon about loneliness and the importance of welcoming, reaching out, and including others to ensure we have lifelong connections to our vibrant community. Uh, I did have the opportunity to meet Ellie's sister last week, so I did say hello to her as well. <laughs> um, today's remaining schedule for Yom Kippur, uh, we have afternoon sessions today aligned with our four Shira Me pillars on Zoom, not on live stream. Uh, use the same Zoom link for all sessions. Uh, at 12.30 today, uh, learning together, uh, Torah, disc Torah study discussion led by Rabbi Briskin. At 1.30, making an impact, join Janice Bader, Arthur Krauss, Andy Lasbin, and Rand uh, Rabbi Briskin to explore ways we be can become advocates for justice. At 2.20 uh, on spiritual growth, uh, join Steve Ginsburg and Rabbi Briskin as well for a guided mindfulness meditation. And then finally at three, connecting together. Uh, hear stories from some of our members about lessons learned during the pandemic. Uh, we'll hear from Shari Cohen, Stephanie Clark, Glenn Firestone, Andy Salzman, and Nancy Sederitz. Um, and then at 1.30, uh, we have our interactive family experience one, uh, at 1.30 here at Share Me, led by Rabbi Goldberg, Fern Levy, and our teens. Right now, it's still outside, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, um, and if not, then it will be inside. Um, and then at 4.30, we will begin our Yisker and Nila service. <clears throat> the sanctuary it will be available uh, for the rest of the day, and the ark will be open to those who want to sit and reflect quietly. Our Shabbat services will continue tomorrow night, uh, this Friday at 6.30, and it will be on Zoom. Uh, you could also buy grocery cards by this Saturday, um, and the cards will be dropped off at your doorstop, uh, doorstep uh, the next day. Share with me does receive 5% back on all orders at no extra cost to you. Um, I know that we've talked quite a bit about the food drive. Um, our goal is to collect 10,000 pounds. As of this past Sunday, we uh, collected 3,500, so we're on our way. So continue to drop off your donations at any time up until our distribution date of October 4th. Uh, we also need uh, volunteers to help build our new sukkah. Uh, this coming Sunday on September 19th uh, at 9 a.m., you could contact David Novick, our men's club president, or Mike Markowitz for more information. Um, and then on next Saturday, the 25th of September, is our sukkah crawl. You could visit one or all of our Sukkot, for some of our members will be bidding at their home. You could register online at our website. And then finally, look for more information about our lifelong programs uh, this year. A wide variety of things are being offered. Um, Information is available electronically on our website, and you can also pick up a hard copy in the office. On behalf of myself, the Board of Directors, happy and healthy to all of you and your loved ones. Thank you. Just one more uh, quick note. Thank you, Jason. Um, one more just quick note. For those who um, are going to be, uh, would like to stay for the afternoon, are going to be joining us for uh, Yisker and Neila later on, uh, you are welcome to stay here and uh, participate in our learning sessions on Zoom. Uh, we will be gathered uh, sort of in the back 
corner of the, of, of, of the social hall. We'll have the Zoom and a TV set up there as well. Um, if you have your own device and you just want to kind of go into a different place and zoom on, you can do that as well. Uh, for those who are going to stay here, feel free to come in and out as you like. We just know that it is a long day and you need to certainly take care of yourself. So feel free to be in here, be learning with us, take a walk around the neighborhood um, as we just uh, spend the day together. Um, so our concluding, well, I'll, I'm going to let you introduce our, our team choir. <laughs> our concluding <laughs> prayer is, uh, you can find on page 318, I am blessed this year that I am able to have our teens come and sing with us, Leah Shubin, Danny Winkler, Quinn Goldberg, Hayom Ta'am Senu. done. Thank you. Gemar Chatima Tova. Learning will begin in 1235, not 1230. And uh, we'll see you this afternoon or throughout the day. <laughs>